Big Noon Kickoff presents Bear Bets. I'm Chris the Bear Felica. I will be joined shortly by Jeff Schwartz and then later Sammy P and Will Hill during the gambling group thread chat. Uh, the goal to find winning wagers, we've done less than optimal so far. So we're, we're a couple of units down, but we are now into October, Jeff. Conference season is fully here, fully upon us. Uh, each week seems to be getting better and better with the number of uh, significant games being played. So now that the calendar has turned to October, hopefully the uh, the record will uh, will improve. What's going on? Not much, man. I'm enjoying this this season because it is so wide open. Like most years, this time of year, we get to conference season. We can pencil in an SEC team at the top. We can pencil in the Big Ten team, you know, you know, a Big 12 team, maybe ACC team. Unfortunately, Pac-12 is typically left out of that. This year, the Pac-12 is not. The Pac-12 is in the conversation be, yes. for, for a playoff team. And with the last year, the 14 playoff, the dynamic of this playoff feels different to me than it would with the 12 team, where I think a 12 team playoff, it's going to be so much harder for maybe some of the newer teams that might make the playoff this year to win a 12 team playoff. I mean, that's, that's three or four games against top opponents this year. You only have to beat two of those teams. And so it makes it more fun to see as we get down the stretch, which some of these kind of maybe newer playoff teams get into the playoff and which one have a real chance to win a championship. Yeah. And I think one of the arguments that we were, I was talking about with someone with the 12 team playoff, like the number of meaningful conference regular season games that, a school like Ohio State or Georgia is going to play like the number is zero. So it's, it's kind of disappointing from uh, that. But hey. But also, Bear, here's the thing the goal, of, I'm anti 12 team playoff, by the As way. The, the goal of a playoff should be to find a champion, correct? Mm hmm. A 12-team playoff doesn't get us any closer to that goal. It just adds more watchable games, which I'm fine with. I'm fine with that goal. Right. But think about like, let's use a, a, a team like a TCU, right? They won a game last year against Michigan and sort of an upset, right? They, 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 they had two defensive scores. Michigan did not score twice inside the two-yard line. And now they're in the championship game. Now, they got blown out, I get it. But, you know, maybe where things happen again, they beat Georgia. In this year's version of TCU, would have to win three of those games to win a championship, two to even make it to a championship game. It's harder to do for these upstarts. These, the, you know, these teams have been kind of making a Cinderella run where – it's really going to favor the Georgias, the Ohio States, the Michigans to, 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 to have more depth, better players, more blue chip players, better coaching. There's, they will survive a 12 team playoff. A TCU is not going to survive that. The, 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 the Cinderella story is gone with a 12 team playoff. So before we get ahead to the 12 team playoff yeah. this year, we've got the 14 playoff. We've now, as I mentioned, we are now in October. Yeah. Uh, all football playoff rankings will be coming out. In about a month or so. Yeah. I don't even know the exact date anymore. I don't, it's, Mid October, I think. It, it usually it's usually there. it's late October. Week seven or eight, right? Yeah. Six, six, seven, eight ish, yeah. So you you have you have one American dollar or one yeah. unit, whatever you want to do. If you had to make a play right now on a team to win, because that, that's a great question in itself. Like, how many teams legitimately yeah. have a chance to win the national championship? I, I it's probably around ten, no? It, it, yes and no. It, to, to me, I look at of course, I'm a former offensive lineman, but I look at a couple of things first, right? Quarterback play and then in the trenches, right? Because we've seen at times that your quarterback can get you very far, TCU last year, right? But when you play a Georgia, you have to bring your lunch pail in the trenches, and TCU was not ready for that. We, we've seen Michigan not ready in the trenches, and they, they're a good team in the trenches against Georgia. So which teams can have the quarterback and the trenches? So you look at, you know, obviously, Georgia, Michigan, and Ohio State. I think a Texas is in that category as well. Um, you know, maybe Oklahoma. We'll see how that game goes this weekend. You look at, at you know out west of Washington and Oregon. You know, USC. I think we thought maybe, but now their defense I think is probably out of it. You look at Miami, a Florida State. Like, there's more teams this year that have the potential. And again, with a four team playoff, I feel much better about taking a long shot on someone who has to win one game and then maybe get lucky in the second game. So there's a lot of teams I, I like for this. The one team I think I would say, and I. I, I hate being on on Texas ever, but they're <laughs> they're, they're they're really good. They are really like, good. Sark decided when he got to Texas, we're going to hire great coaches, which you which you need to have, right? Like th that that's a, pre a prerequisite for being a good college football coach, hiring good staff, which he did. He got a lot of coaches that are very good at their job. But then when he did, he attacked the trenches. He got good football players to rush the passer and to block for the quarterback. It's paying off. It's paying off this year when those guys have now developed into older players. And I think we're seeing a team that 
is good all around, not much weakness. And, and, and the weakness, I think, is like Quinn Ewers, right? Is like how consistent can he be week in and week out? If they beat Oklahoma this weekend, the price for them to win a championship is going way down. And so right. I think if you if you take them now, you're in a good position. People say Michigan. Okay. Like they haven't won a game in January in what six years? Like, like yeah, I, I don't see Michigan yet. I, I think we can talk about this with Texas, and I'm sure we will if they do win. Like, if they do beat Oklahoma, yeah, and they run through the regular season undefeated, and they have that win in Tuscaloosa. Like, are they in a position where? Maybe they don't have to beat Oklahoma in the Big Twelve they championship have, like TCU game. last year. They were like, like, like so. They, we do I mean who knows what's going to happen the rest of the year. And, yeah. but, but that's just something to file away. Like I think a lot of people are saying, "Oh, this is just going to be meeting one of yeah. two, and ultimately it doesn't matter." But for Texas, I think it absolutely matters because if they have yeah. the win, it, win it, Brent Denny in a in a game that was not as close as the final score indicated, they were the better team. Yeah, they were, and if they got the regular season win over Oklahoma, like that. That's going to count for something. And I also think when you look out West, the Pac-12 tends to beat itself up. I think the same will happen this season. So you you, you, you won't have, I don't think we'll have a Pac-12 playoff team. I think it seems good enough to make the playoff, but you look at, again, like Oregon has to go to Washington and Utah. Washington has obviously USC, Oregon, Utah. I mean, they all all play each other. You know, to to, to get through the Pac-12 Except for UCLA, who doesn't have Oregon or Washington. Correct. But, But to get through that slate... Like you can have an eleven one Pac twelve team in a Pac twelve championship game playing another eleven and one team, and like and, you know, like, right. and or eleven or ten and two team, and that team loses, and like they, like Utah last year, right? They knock USC out. That allows Texas to go undefeated and lose to Oklahoma in in, in a Big Twelve championship. It allowed TCU last season to lose in the Big Twelve championship game, get in the playoff because Utah beat USC. So um, it's just a lot. It's a lot more fun to watch the sport when we have all these teams. And you just don't say, okay, we have Georgia, Ohio State, Michigan, Alabama yep. done. It's right. nice to sort of have Agreed. this season where we have so many teams. And we talked about in the gambling group chat coming up about Miami. Like Miami's sitting right there, man, yep. as a team that has rebuilt itself in the trenches. Myers hired good good coaches. The schedule they have, there's a possibility that they end up being a playoff team in year two under Cristobal. Let, let, let's well, that's a good tease for for later. In the yes, show. So we'll let's, do let's gamble group chat in, in in a little bit. But first, bear, we have to get to your wagers of the weekend. We have four right now, and then we'll have a, a best bet at the end of the show. Bear and I will both have a best bet. We'll start out west. I love this bear. I love this. We're starting with Washington State at UCLA. UCLA's favored by three. The the number uh, the total is fifty nine and a half. I should say. Washington State's four and zero. They beat Oregon State at home two weekends ago. They've also defeated Wisconsin. They're 3-1 against a spread with an average margin of victory north of 20 points. UCLA is 3-1. They just lost to Utah 14-7 before their bye. Brewers are 2-2 against a spread. Both these teams off a bye. Playing in the Rose Bowl this weekend. Bear, where are you going? I'm going with the Bruins. It's down to three now, which uh, surprised me some. So I will uh, happily play three as opposed to three and a half to UCLA. I think the, the idle week. Did UCLA good? Uh, the offensive struggles they had in Salt Lake are certainly not uh, uncommon for, for anyone, especially with a, a freshman making his first uh, Pac-12 road start uh, at in front in front of the Moss. So I like UCLA here. This is yeah. going to be the uh, the the common everyday uh, casual better is going to look. Oh well, Washington State they're ranked and UCLA is yes. unranked, and, and and Washington State's not favored like. Why is that? I have to bet on Washington State. I think there are people who I think are listening to this pod or above that and beyond that, and they know that AP poll ranking has nothing to do with who should be favored in a game. <laughs> but but I but I, I do think this will be a difficult spot for 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 Cam Ward and that Washington State offense, as good as they've been. I think going on the road against a defense which leads the nation in, in, in opponent yards per play, I think that will be. Uh, Problematic, so I, I think uh, the Bruins will bounce back behind that uh, behind that running game of defense. Washington State, their defense is seventy third in points per drive, eighty seventh in yards per drive, and ninety third in rushing defense success rate. Not good against that's the surpri- I was going to say that, that's that's surprising for what, what you're talking about the points per drive and yard like in yards per drive like for for Wazoo has thought about this like high power like offense that scores often like those rate 
percent. Those rate numbers are not on defense. Yeah, that the, good at all. Uh, on, on defense, especially. Oh, defense. No, yeah, defensively, which which what they do well, right? I mean, that's what they're supposed to do well. They also are not good on third and short and third and medium. Again, not good things for playing. We'll, we'll play more in this game later. Matisse, I have a great Pac-12 stat for this game. It's going to be uh, potentially brought up a lot later in the show. Let's get let's get your second wager here. We're going to the SEC. Georgia is favored by 14 and a half at Kentucky. Uh, excuse me, they're home against Kentucky, I believe. Sorry about that. Uh, it is uh, 48 is the total in this game. Georgia is 5 and 0. Oh. They've covered zero of the games so far this season. They just survived on the road against Auburn uh, using the throw to 19 offense. I would do that as well. Kentucky's also undefeated Bear. They destroyed Florida last weekend on the ground. It was pretty impressive. They're 4 and 1 against a spread this season. Where are you leaning? Georgia, Kentucky. I don't think much of Florida. Um, I'm, I'm kind of, I have a little bit of regret for not being all over Kentucky last week. Um, but I did hop in very early live in that game, which was yeah. good. But if you, if you look at Kentucky, uh, their last six trips to Athens, 0, 13, 13, 3, 17, and 10 uh, are their point totals. So you're looking at probably 13 or 14 max yes. for, for, for Georgia. At some point, you would expect the Bulldogs start quicker and put 60 solid minutes together. I think it's a good a good opportunity to get on a, a contrarian favorite here. I think Kentucky, north of two touchdowns, is a popular underdog. Yes. I will go the other way and lay the points with the defending, two-time defending national champions. I'm with you on this wager for a couple of reasons. Um, you know, one, you mentioned the public's going to be all over Kentucky. Like, they're going to love to back Kentucky here. Um, but I think people are going to over, overthink last weekend for Georgia, right? Around the country this season, we've seen in conference games, especially the first conference road game for a ranked team, a little slow to start, right? Penn State, Northwestern, Florida State, BC. We've seen out West as well. Georgia had their first road game of the season last weekend, a quarterback playing his first road start, and they won. They won the game by seven. They came back and won. Now, Kentucky, they're hosting Kentucky, who's very one dimensional on offense. Like, if you're, if you're Kentucky or any team playing Georgia and you have one way to move the ball, the ways they're shutting you down. Like they're not going to score enough points in this game. So I just don't see the amount of points Kentucky can score to, to cover this game. I mean, this game could be what? 27, 27, 10, something like that. Right. 30, 13, something like that. And, 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 and they cover the game. All right. We'll go back to the sec for your third bet here, Alabama, at Texas A&M, potentially the biggest game for both these schools in a long time. A&M is uh, getting a point and a half at the moment. Uh, the total is 46 and a half. A&M is four and excuse me, Alabama is four and one. They have uh, won back-to-back conference games by double digits. They're three and two against the spread. A&M uh, has bounced back well after losing to Miami in week two. They've won three in a row, including two straight in conference. A&M is four and one against the spread. Where are you going here, Bear? I'm taking A and M plus the uh, the points. I, I think there's still there there there, there may have been a, a two out there, but I think one and a half is pretty much the the the, the consistent line now. Um, if you look at Alabama, I, I, I get it. Like you expect Alabama to just walk out onto the field and be what we've seen from Nick Saban for the last 15 years, but this is a team that hasn't been able to run the ball. They're near they're like 70th in the country in yeah. yards per carry, and it's not like they played. Uh, this, I mean, South Florida did a number on them uh, in shutting down their offense. And I know Milrow has looked better the last couple of weeks. What is he? 27 to 33 the last couple of weeks against Ole Miss and Mississippi State. But I think we've seen from those defenses the last couple of weeks that they are not very good. This is a massive step up against yeah. a really good A&M defense that it's even without Connor Wigman now on offense. Max, jo- Max Johnson's been around. He's yeah. got experience. He can make plays. And it's so funny to think about A and M, how like everyone was ready to pass the hat around to come up with that seventy million dollars <laughs> for to, Jimbo. For Jimbo, <laughs> and now you win this game, and you're in a position where All it's, the money makes sense. We can get to the SEC championship game, and we can get to the college football playoffs. Yeah. So this is a this is a massive game for A and M, a massive game for Jimbo. I like them here. I, I'm. I, I am ready to, to to hop in on the Aggies, and if I'm wrong, hey, so be it. But uh, but I do think uh, it, this game is going to resemble yeah. more what we saw Alabama versus Texas opposed to what we saw uh, against yeah. a couple of bad defenses the last couple of weeks. 
I think it's okay to say that Alabama is not the same team they've been. I think Saban. it is too. And I know that we default to saying I'm picking Saban. It happened against Texas, and Texas covered that game. If I'm, if I'm correct, right? Like, oh yeah, yeah. they went out right. Yeah, like it was six point dogs. Oh, they were dogs. I'm sorry, that game. Yes, like it's okay to say. I think there's an NFL parallel with the Patriots. We still kind of give Belichick that credit, and they're not as good anymore. And, and Alabama is better than the Patriots are relative to their sports, but. Alabama is just not the same team. Is it as simple as saying we don't have a first round draft pick on, on our team at quarterback? Is it as simple as that? No, they, or... don't, they, they don't have first round picks as much everywhere. They they've had for years. But that's what I wanted to hear uh, you say they, because they, I think that that is the yes. that's like the I don't want to say low hanging fruit, but that's but, like the immediate throw. Well, they don't have Mac Jones, Tua Tonga Valoa, well, Jalen Hurts, or whatever. Those are going to have don't have Smith. They don't have Jalen Waddle. They don't have offensive tackles that are going the first round, guards in the first round. And it makes sense. Look, we, we've we seen in the sport roster building is different now with the portal, with NIL. And it's not just that Alabama gets no good players. They get plenty of good players. But you start picking away two players a class, a class here, a class there, and you, they go to Georgia now. They go to Miami now. And that kind of adds up over a couple of years, right, Bear? Like, like now you look at the roster, it's just not as good. And, and it doesn't mean they're Alabama's bad. Alabama fans don't come at me. That you guys are fine. You're a good football program, but you're just a little bit less good. And it's okay to admit that against a Texas A&M team that defensively, I think we saw Alabama struggle in the Texas game to block Texas. Good luck blocking uh, uh, A&M. So let's get to your last game here for your fourth pick before we get to the gambling group chat, and then obviously the best bet to end the show here. You have uh, Marshall, uh, six and a half point dogs at NC State. The line uh, total, excuse me, the total is 44 and a half. Marshall enters this game after a bye. They're 4-0. and They've covered two of their four games. NC State is 3-2 and in the season, but only 1-4 and against a spread here. Bear, where are you going? It, 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 what happened to the Brennan Armstrong from 2021? He don't look good, does he? I mean, he's down, yeah. now he's gotten, now they've moved on to MJ Morris, which we'll yeah. see if that affects their offense as well. But I took the herd here, plus six and a half. I think that running game uh, with Rashid Ali, and, and and I think they'll be able to control some of the clock. They've already won at a lower echelon ECC team this year in Virginia Tech. Uh, they take on another mid to lower echelon ECC team here. Uh, you're getting six and a half points. I, I think they have an opportunity to win outright. So if, you, if you're feeling frisky, uh, maybe play a little Marshall on the money line as well. Uh, if you want to throw in maybe a couple of under, uh, other underdogs uh, on the money line on a round robin, maybe take a look at uh, at Marshall plus 210, Louisville plus 225, Akron plus 180, yeah. Missouri plus 200, Cal plus 290, uh, A&M plus 125. Those are some underdogs that maybe you choose three or four of those, throw them in a uh, – and round robin on the money line, and you might come out, uh, come out come out okay for that. Well, I like on the round robin, I like Louisville for that, I like Missouri for that. Uh, the Cal one is interesting. We'll, we'll get to that in a few minutes. Uh, but there's definitely a spot this week. There's a lot of those six, six and a half point underdogs this yeah. weekend. Uh, the Marshall thing is interesting because I think their coach obviously is kind of itching for another job. It's not really he, yeah, no, what yeah, it is. Right. And like, I think there's a, a part of Marshall that like each week they're trying to show out, obviously. Right. And I think that's partly because they're a good football team, but also Huff is going to end up somewhere, right? He's going to be somewhere next season. Unfortunately, that's probably not a Marshall. All right, let's recap your four wagers so far. We have uh, UCLA favored by three points at home against Washington State. You also have Georgia at home, minus the 14 and a half. They're hosting Kentucky, both teams undefeated. You have AM plus one and a half hosting Alabama. That game, that might get to a pick by kickoff, I have a feeling. Um, Marshall here, uh, plus six and a half on the road at NC State. Those are your four wagers. Stay tuned for Bears' best bet, also my best bet. Uh, we, we, we're going to be in the in, in, in conference of champions. A, a little tease right there for for, for our best bets later. Pack two? Pack two. Well, the, pack, the, the conference champions for one more season, guys. One more. I guess like, what, six more weeks, and then we're done with football season. It's sad in college football. Let's get to the gambling group chat. It's going to be Will Hill, Sammy P., Chris and me talk all things college football. We cover all the big games of the week. We talk about some futures as well. Here's a gambling group chat. All right, Sammy P. Will join Jeff and I again for the gambling group chat. Uh, always a, a great time kicking around a bunch of different ideas and topics and, and wages with these guys. Uh, a lot of big games. Some are sneaky big, but I think no one would argue that the biggest game is uh, at the State Fair of Texas, the Red River rivalry will be 
politically correct here, I guess, and not call it the Red River Shootout, even though they just did. But Texas, Oklahoma, both undefeated. Longhorns put a 49 nothing beat down on the Dylan Gabriel less Sooners last year. Uh, Will, I'll start with you. Any thoughts here on OU Texas? Final time they will uh, meet prior to moving to the SEC? Yeah, it's not a typical Oklahoma Texas game. So I think both these teams are just so much better on defense than they usually are. So, you know, usually this is first one to 40 wins. I don't know that we get that type of game at 61. I haven't jumped in on an under, but that's probably the way I would lean. Um, I, I think, look, I, I think it'll probably be a close game. Uh, if I could get seven, it's six and a half now. At seven, it would be Oklahoma or nothing. But I do think, uh, just from a matchup standpoint, there is an opportunity with a prop. Dylan Gabriel over either passing attempts or passing yards. I think uh, the yards is 268 and a half. Texas, you can't run on and Oklahoma can't run the ball. So I don't think Oklahoma is just going to, you know, pound into a brick wall here and just keep running over and over. I think they're going to throw it. I think they're going to throw it a lot. So I would look at over for, uh, for Gabriel passing. It should be a fun game. Sammy. Anything for you? I agree with the, the total. Yeah. I mean, look, I mean, we've seen red river games in the last 10 years as high as like 75, 76. So to have this game totaled around 60 is pretty alarming. And we know that people will just wake up, roll out of bed, and bet the over. So I'm a little cautious there, but let's also understand that Oklahoma hasn't really played a good offense yet. I mean, Arkansas State, SMU, Tulsa, Cincinnati, Iowa State, none of those teams can really move the ball. None of them get big plays. So Texas will be ideally um, the first elite offense that Oklahoma sees. So I think there's going to be more. I don't think it's going to be like 20 to 13, but I would probably, I'd probably take the points here. This feels like a big number either way. I, I agree with Will. You could probably wait it out either way. Um, you know, six and a half to six is probably fair. But if I could get seven with the Sooners, I would take it. I'm just a little concerned that Oklahoma's defense is a little overrated because they haven't really played a good quarterback yet. I think there's a chance to live bet Oklahoma at some point in this game for the reason Sammy just mentioned, right? Texas has played Alabama. Like, they've played a big dog so far. They've been able to battle in the trenches against a team like that. Now, Oklahoma has not played a team like Texas, right? They have not played an offensive defensive line that that uh, that the Longhorns have. There's a chance that Texas gets out big in this game early, just kind of physically dominating early in the game. And then at some point, Oklahoma claws back as they kind of get used to the, the physicality and speed of playing a much better team. So I think there's a chance to get Oklahoma with a, with a bunch more points at some point you know middle second quarter late second quarter as they kind of figure out how to play a team like texas i i think a couple of things that, that i've learned this week spoke spoken to people and just kind of also remembered someone brought up to me about the whole venables and sign ceiling and sark being familiar with that so what does texas do to kind of maybe mix up signals mix up signs because Look, whether whether will you agree, disagree, your your thoughts on that is a part of the game. Is it not? That's out there. And obviously, Texas did a great job last year, just going up and down on Oklahoma, who was mightily shorthanded on offense. And I think the other thing is, is I kind of feel the same way you do, Jeff. Like Texas is better, like better than Alabama all over the field. It feels like they could get up kind of big in this game. And, and win big. And then I was talking to someone who had, had wa uh, watched Oklahoma uh, this year, involved in one of their broadcasts, and I talked to someone who was involved in playing Oklahoma uh, this year mm -hmm. and, 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 and last year or will be. And he kind of said the same thing that you said, like, or, or uh, Sammy P, what you were saying, like, he didn't think, like, they looked that improved on defense. Like, he kind of thought maybe – Statistically, it was a little bit of a mirage. Now, we'll see what happens on Saturday, but I think what Jeff alluded to and, uh, and Samuel alluded to, like Arkansas State and, and, and the teams that they've been playing on offense, it, it could be maybe a, a little bit of a, I don't want to say a rude awakening, but clearly a much different level of competition this week for Oklahoma. But if you, have, if you like Oklahoma and you want Oklahoma futures, this is probably the week to get them because while – you may wind up with a rematch in the Big 12 championship game. Your prices might get thrown off a little bit uh, if, if the Sooners do pull the upset. The, the other massive game in the state of Texas, Alabama at a and we saw on Wednesday this line move from two and a half to one and a half. Uh, you can probably do some investigating out there to understand why that might have been, and we'll see what happens on Saturday. But I kind of threw something out there on on Twitter during the week. And obviously people just 
kind of misinterpreted everything and just, <laughs> but, but yeah, yeah, I'm calling for the end of the Alabama dynasty. But what I had said was, is this kind of the most significant game that Alabama has had under Saban? And I laid out the reasons why. I said, if you lose, you've got two losses before the end of October, the first time since the first year. Your, your national championships are gone, and they've only played a handful of games since 2008 where they haven't had a national championship opportunity going into the game. Your SEC West champion title both are probably up in, up in smoke. You would have lost to Texas A&M, one, one of the, your bigger rivals in that division. You will have already lost to Texas, a team that's coming into the SEC. So that I, and now with the NIL era, like we've seen that you lost, you lost to Tennessee last year. You lost to LSU last year. I think they're five and three, maybe in their last eight SEC games. that might, or five and three in the last eight games against power five teams. It might be like, the gap has certainly closed, and I think it shows that if Alabama were to go on the road and lose to A&M, it kind of means that the days of Alabama just walking out on the field and being better than everybody and beating anybody uh, are kind of over. They're not saying they're going to go 8-4 and four and 7-5 and five every year, but you just can't assume that Alabama just throw their name in the college football playoff every year. And I actually got a, a good response from a couple people who kind of said the opposite. Like, is it the biggest? It, it, no, not it, it is it. It is the biggest game for Jimbo Fisher at AM because you're never going to get another opportunity. You're a short home dog on your home field. You win this game, you got a tie break against Alabama. You still got some other teams in the West. And, and maybe you're the team that comes out of this, uh, maybe going to the SEC championship. So if you like AM, you could probably get to. I, I played AM at plus 900 to win the SEC earlier this week, just in Connecticut for some reason. FanDuel didn't have SEC title odds up, and DraftKings did. So, again, I have no idea what's going on in Connecticut with who can post what. But I'm, I'm kind of going on here. Uh, Alabama A&M. Uh, Sammy, what, do you, what, what are your thoughts here? Because I like the Aggies here quite a bit. Lots to unpack there, Bear. Let me start with the line movement. Um, there's a rumor rumbling around Tuscaloosa that Jalen Milrow has a hamstring issue, and that's why the line moved because I helped move it. It went from two and a half to one and a half. And you know, <laughs> if he's if he's hobbled or out, I mean that line is completely different. I mean, if he's hobbled, Alabama goes off the favorite, maybe Bama minus one. If he's out though, and we see either Buckner or the freshman, A and M's gonna go off the favorite here. I had this question that I, I asked two guys yesterday. I said, you know, psychologically, how tough is it to bet against Bama? Because there are two absolutes in football. We don't bet against Saban, and we don't bet against Belichick, right? We have better things to do. But I think that's sort of lazy. I mean, in my power ratings, I have Bama and AM equal on a neutral. I have them both at 119. Ideally, that's a spot where you would take AM at home in front of 112,000 people. But I got a little two and a half. If Milrow is out, I don't care what the number is. I'll lay three with AM because if it's Buckner or it's the freshman going on the road, Will, to 112,000 people in his first SEC road start, I will lay three. But I'd rather, like, know for sure the status of Milrow and then make my move. Yeah, everything comes to an end. Doesn't mean this is the end, but it doesn't mean it's not. I like the under more than anything, at least at the current number. Like, look, when you had a chance to bet three or four and you're grabbing one, even if you like the side, that's just a, a tough way to operate. I just think, look, an under here is a good, a good uh, probably look with – just Alabama, it's not anywhere near the same talent at receiver. Their offensive line hasn't been great. I, I think whoever Saban plays at quarterback, whether it's a banged up Milrow or, or whoever, he doesn't really trust the quarterback. And AM has been good on defense, you know, ever since Miami. That was an impressive performance last week against Arkansas. Uh, I, I would look towards an under here. I think the under would be the play or or AM or even even both. I, I think AM again, you know. The, the talent that they've acquired there is sort of finally starting to play like the talent they acquired there, right? We're, we're starting to see that difference, especially on defense. And, and Bear mentioned Alabama, right? The issues are not that Saban forgot how to coach or that, you know, they don't know what they're doing anymore. They don't have as many good players. It's like, it's that yeah. simple, right? The quarterback is not as good as it's been in the past. The offensive line is not as good as it's been in the past. The wide receivers are not as good as they've been in the past. The defense is good. 
but not as good as they've been in the past. And eventually you sort of just don't have the same players. And, and this is what Alabama is dealing with. And this is, again, to your point about a ms biggest game, maybe in, in, in the Jimbo Fisher. And they could smell sort of like blood in the water, right? They can see this Bama team. They watched them on film. They, 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 they see how they played it to me. It's a and and the under. I, I mean, I'd be comfortable taking both of them. Uh, I took a and after Sammy Texas yesterday. So I, I feel good with my, my, in my two and a half right now. Yeah, elsewhere in the, in the, in the SEC, uh, you got Kentucky and Georgia. Uh, Georgia is still not put together 60 solid minutes of football start to finish. Uh, their, their defense has played much better in the second half uh, of games lately. Beck turned the ball over. Like, I guess any time you get out of a conference road game and you don't play your best and you win, it's a good thing. But at some point, Georgia's going to need to put 60 minutes. Now, you know, maybe, maybe the point isn't until – the SEC championship game, or maybe the point isn't until uh, they go to Knoxville in a few weeks. But uh, Georgia has certainly been less than impressive. But this line against Kentucky, 14 and a half, it kind of has the whole, aren't they kind of begging you to take Kentucky here? I mean, as Auburn did last week, they, they had struggled mightily on offense against, against Georgia in previous years. Kentucky has done the same year. Mark Stoops has kind of played this game in the past to kind of keep it closer, maybe to keep that ranking higher. Uh, he had that, they had that massive drive at the end of the game in Athens a couple of years ago uh, <laughs> to, to get the backdoor cover. But uh, it, this, this has the look of one of those games, like kind of like, go ahead, take, take, take Kentucky in the 14 and a half year and, and see how that goes. I, I, I like Georgia this week. I think uh, Kentucky coming off of that game against Florida, big emotional high at home. And, and this might be the, the lowest possible by level we get on Georgia, uh, I think in a while laying 14 and a half at home. So I, I, I am not taking the bait with Kentucky. I'm going the other way with the, uh, with the Bulldogs. Will, you have any thoughts on this one? Yeah, I think uh, I agree with everything you said. You said it well. Uh, to me, this is another under, um, you know, Leary for, for as well as Kentucky's like the, played here. I like Leary, that under. Yeah. I mean, Leary hasn't been good last week, nine of 19. He's completing 50% of his passes. Who knows how healthy he is coming off the peck injury. Uh, Kentucky's going to want to muck it up, play slow Georgia. You know, they're going to run the ball too. So uh, getting to 49 points to beat you here is asking a lot. I, I would look at another under here. Sammy, what's going on? Twitch the hedges this week. Anything? I would lay it. I mean, this reminds me of a game two years ago. I remember Jeff and his buddy RJ Young did a show on Spaces, sponsored by Wendy's, and it was Georgia go. Arkansas. Wow. Remember that, Jeff? And sounds the spread like was still, 19. sounds like you're still getting residuals. I, I was there for that game. Was it was 19, over before quarter and like well, it's a lot of points. And I'm like, I, it, yeah, but it is until it's 21, nothing. <laughs> You're like, I wish I had 29 instead of 19. Uh, I make these two 17 on a neutral. It's a home game for Georgia. Georgia has a home field. That's at least four points. So I'm at 21. I'm not really sure what I'm missing here. I think the narrative is sort of overblown that, well, you know, Georgia hasn't covered yet. Sure. That's true. But if you haven't been on the train for the last four weeks, and you jump on right now, you're you're nothing. You're zero and zero. <laughs> like if you've been capitalizing on fading Georgia, good for you. But eventually Georgia's gonna run away from somebody. And I, I think the lack of offense for Kentucky here is really dangerous. Like Kentucky's physical. We know Kirby has said, you know, we're ready for a war in the trenches. But how many points does Kentucky score? And Jeff, like if I made an over-under on Kentucky. It's like 13 and a half, man. That's probably it. And and Georgia yeah. could easily get to 35. You just can't be one dimensional against Georgia defense, right? You, you, you can't come into a game saying, okay, all we're going to do is run the ball, play action pass. Georgia will eat that up. And, and no matter how poorly you think they, you know, Georgia's played it at times this year, their one dimensional offense is, is the recipe for success for them, right? I mean, if you say, okay, just stop the run, that's all you have to worry about. They're, they're going to be able to stop the run. And look, last week was, I believe, Georgia's first road game of the season, right? It was the first time on the road. It was the first time for, for Beck to kind of get that those road legs under him. And they finally figured out, no surprise, throw to 19 and we're, and we're better. Like they're, that. They're, they're, they're back at home. And I think that they'll play more to control, understanding that they won that road game last weekend. And to your point about Kentucky's offense, they can't do anything against just Georgia defense because they're, so they're way too one-dimensional. I, it's funny. I kicked this around. Uh, with Will and, and Gil and Alexander at another separate text thread. I might, actually, I might have put it on this one as well. 
NFL wise, I know this is not an NFL direct prop show, prop show right now, but where will an how high will an NFL team take Brock Bowers, knowing that you've got all those quarterbacks, you've got all those wide receivers, and you got all those linemen in the draft this year? Like, like, but he is a generational talent yeah. and an instant difference maker. He'll go in the top ten. You think so? Okay, I think he'll go in the top ten. Um, He'll be looked at as one of the best total weapons in this. In the, you know, there's not a running back going in the top ten this year. I don't believe, right? There's we know of at least one wide receiver going in the top ten, and all those quarterbacks. So to me, it's got to be right. I mean, there's there's one tackle in the top ten. The uh, the Penn State kid, a couple of pass rushers will probably be up there, and Bowers I think has to be that high. I hope so because he should. He's, he's he, because because if he falls, then you're getting one of those teams that's like a a middling borderline playoff team who's going to get a, a total difference maker. I, I'm, it's funny. Wait, I'm we're just going to gloss board. over the fact that you're in another group thread. We're just going to gloss up. You get around, huh, Bear? How many group threads are you in? I, I do get around. <laughs> hey, I, I, I do get around. The only, the only place I don't go anymore when I see that 812 area code pop up for Indiana, that one immediately gets <laughs> that, that, that one has like the notifications <laughs> off. I'm not in that one anymore. Whether Indiana, Purdue, uh uh-uh, uh, gone, done, over. But yeah, we, we got to keep our, we, we, we got avenues. We're all over the place. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking, though. Like There are a lot of games this week that are like six or six and a half. You got Fresno minus six against Wyoming. TCU, how, how bad must Iowa State be that TCU is laying six and a half against in Ames? Uh, OU Texas is six and a half. Northern Illinois is six and a half. And Akron, um, Notre Dame, six and a half. At Louisville, I might have mentioned that already. NC State, six and a half against Marshall. There are a lot of games the, there that the kind of LSU, LSU, Missouri. LSU actually, Missouri actually took money and they're down to five and okay, a half right yeah. now. So a lot of people on Missouri and what, what's Durden going to do against that LSU defense, which was an absolute sieve last week. I'd love to be able to catch my LSU season win total under first week in October. But I, I want to point to that Notre, that Notre Dame Louisville game because you got Notre Dame two weeks ago. You get your hearts ripped out in the yeah. final second. Last week, you have that unbel- like miraculous 95-yard drive, whatever it was, at the end of the game to, to beat Duke. Next week, you're home for SC. This is game three of four against ranked opponents in the road. Like, this this has, like, upset alert sirens written all over. Jeff, I can see you nodding your head, so go. <laughs> This is just a bad spot for Notre Dame to be in, as you mentioned, emotionally, right? Again, guys, these are these are 18, 22 year olds. The reason why a lot of times we talk about emotions and wagering and spots is because it does affect players, right? They know USC's coming next weekend. They're gonna probably have all the shows there again. They know USC be undefeated. And now you just you 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 lost a heartbreaker. You won a heartbreaker, and now you go back on the road again to a team. Again, everyone circles Notre Dame as the team that they want to beat each season on their schedule. It's going to be loud. It's going to be crowded. You're, again, back-to-back emotional games and USC next weekend. It just feels like just on the spot alone, not even looking at X and O's and who's playing and whatnot, it's just a bad spot for Notre Dame to be in this weekend. Speaking of bad spots, how about Georgia Tech? Can I talk you into 21? I don't know if there's 21 and a half out there. Miami uh, has at UNC next week, and then two weeks they're Clemson. That's you know these these are two of the biggest games Miami's played in a long time. Maybe that's a little sleepy spot. Mm-hmm. Maybe Georgia Tech doesn't get the full attention of Miami. Can I talk you into the three touchdowns there with the Yellow Jackets? That that's happened. That's happened before. Will under previous administration in South Florida, where they have absolutely overlooked Georgia Tech and. Uh, the Yellow Jackets have come in there as a big underdog and, and pulled upsets. Not sure if that's going to happen because Georgia Tech is so bad against the run. They can't stop anyone uh, on the ground. And h- how about that result last week? They got up 14 nothing in a blink against Bowling Green and, and then blew that game. So uh, the uh, the pessimist in me would, 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 would say, yeah, I can, I can get on board there. But I, I got a feeling this might be a little bit different uh, makeup of a uh, – of a Miami team. So but this is this is a, like a, a crystal ball special, right? Like you win this game by yeah, yeah, by yeah, 10 no. points and 14 points and next week you go you go I would love I would love for them to do that. Exactly. But, but, Sleepwalk but this week. That's exactly like yep. that's that's sort of the I've watched you know for 4 years in Oregon. Like this is what happens. Like you you have a home game, you're supposed to win by a lot of points, you don't cover and then next week you look absolutely incredible against the best opponent you've played so far this season. I guess second best opponent. But like you you're up for that game, down for this game. So I I would I think 21 it's a, it's a lot of points. Just historically looking at again, I, I know Mario well. This is a spot where they tend to sort of not play their best game. Put it like that. 
Sammy, I, I hear a rumor that you're going to be present at Hard Rock Stadium on Saturday. Uh, I will be there. I got my Looney Tunes Miami Hurricane shirt from 1994. I'm ready to go. Um, probably bet the under 57 and a half. That's already come down. Open 60. Um, sleepy spot. I, I agree. Maybe Miami doesn't have the incentive to run it up and score 40, 42. So yeah, maybe under 57. I think, you know, the other interesting angle with Miami bear that nobody's talking about is how good they've been in the trenches. I brought this up a couple of weeks ago. They are controlling the line of scrimmage at Miami for the first time in a long time. And, and that's because Mario has recruited the trenches very well. It hasn't taken them long to turn that D line around. They're very powerful, very physical. I think that they can slow whatever Georgia tech does well. And even if they cover 21, Maybe it's like 35-7 or something like that, which which keeps me under a, a very high total in the 50s. Yeah, they got like the three three offensive line starters in the portal, uh, including kid from UCF, who's one of the one of the best one of the best centers uh, in in the country right now. I'm looking down the slate as well. One of the, this is going to be the game that on Saturday everyone's going to in the, in the, who don't speak our language. Oh, and Washington State is upset by UCLA. No. UCLA is a three-point favorite yes. at home against Wazoo. Uh, Wazoo coming in here undefeated uh, with, with Ward obviously throwing the ball well. But I, I like the Bruins here. I think you're off a, off a week since that offensive difficulty in, in Salt Lake uh, with, with Moore making his first road start. You still have a defense which leads the nation in opponent yards per play. I think Wazoo is going to have a hard time putting up a big number here. Now, look, I respect Wazoo and I respect their defense, but but I do like UCLA here. I think like their ability to run, uh, their their ability to control the line of scrimmage, and, and I think that defensive line and that defense in general, in general for the Bruins, I think is enough. So I laid the three with, with, with UCLA uh, against the Cougars in, in, in a game that is funny. Uh, we we uh, Jeff and I were talking about before, like, like well, what's the over under for attendance in the Rose Bowl oh, with, the Dodgers, with the Dodgers having a, uh, a home playoff game uh, that, that and, day uh, as well. But the Trojans have a, the, the Trojans are playing at home. I'll just say th- this about this game, and we're going to talk a lot about this game throughout the show because you know we we both have it on some of our of our wagers. Washington State's going from playing home game against Wisconsin, first time they hosted a Power 5 conference opponent in Pullman since 1998. Then they play Oregon State, a, a national TV game, ranked opponents, or that, you know, that Pac-2 game, right? A, a, a blow, not a big blow win. It was a blowout for a while. Beavers came back, but Cougars won. Now they're going to the Rose Bowl, guys, for a 12 Pacific kickoff on Pac-12 Network. There's going to be 18,000 fans in that stadium. It's going to be quiet. It's going to be sleepy. It's going to be in, the, in you know early wake up call. Get to the stadium. Go play in front of nobody. It's a bring your own energy type of game. I, I think Washington State's going to come out really, really slow in this game. And UCLA's going to be able to run the football on them. Dante Moore played poorly on the road against Utah. Everyone plays poorly on the road if you're a young player at Utah. He's back home now. I, I yeah, they're they're both off a of bye, but Chip Kelly off a of bye. I really like offensively what what kind of the, the energy he brings to that game. So to me. I, I'm on the Bruins. My, it was my first wager I made this week um, in the Pac-12. The Bruins are going to win this game. Can we stay in the Pac-12? What What would a Bear Bets podcast be without discussing the Colorado Buffaloes? Can that defense really lay more than a field goal on the road? I know it's Arizona State, but if you look, they're minus 12 in turnovers. Some of that, okay, you, you have bad quarterback play, but uh, if you look at the fumble luck, they fumbled seven times. They've lost five of them. Their opponents have fumbled seven times and only lost one of them. Uh, I just don't think that defense with Colorado can, can you know, be laying, uh, what's it, four, four and a half on the road against anybody. I like the Sun Devils here. I think they'll be able to move the ball. I think it's a toss-up game. 12 of the Arizona State turnovers, excuse me, eight of the Arizona State turnovers happened in one game against Fresno State, right? That was like the worst game they've ever played in the history of Sun Devil State. They lost 29 to zero. So, like, they, they've been better since then. Kenny Dillingham took over play calling before the USC game. And the offense has taken off. I mean, taken off is relative, but it's been better <laughs> since he took over play calling. The quarterback situation obviously is is pretty tough, but you're right. Like, Colorado's defense is in the hundreds for, for you know, points per drive, yards per drive, yards per play. Um, the question I have is is just can Arizona State like can they score thirty in the thirties to cover this game? You've seen Colorado's defense, right? Yeah, but Arizona, <laughs> I I, Arizona, I, Arizona's thirty to twenty seven scored a lot though. I mean, I could see that. I I, I could see that. Just Sammy, you hopping on the old uh, DraftKings app or running over to the South Point and grabbing the four and a half because that those are the two spots I see four and a half available right now. No, I'm done being called names for betting against Colorado. I forget it. We've already had our fun. 
I mean, how much money did we make collectively betting against Colorado? Not only against Oregon, but against uh, USC with the total. I mean, that total was 72, and there really could have been 100 points in that game. So I I don't think there's an edge on my side of the fence. I I certainly wouldn't lay points with Colorado, but I did find it ironic that Dion's already snapping back on Twitter this week on Wednesday and Thursday because, hey, he's got a winnable game this weekend, and that's sort of what Dion does, doesn't it? Speaking of winnable games, you you look at one of the uh, undefeated matchups this week. You got Maryland 5 0 going to Columbus 4 0. Big new kickoff will be there. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting back to the old horseshoe on the banks of the Olin Tangy. Does it feel like Maryland? It feels like a lot of people think Maryland has a legit chance uh, this year with, 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 with Talia. With Talia and some of the offensive guys that they have around. And if you watch Maryland, they look a little bit more physical on, on the line of scrimmage, a little mm-hmm. bit more complete on the offensive line. But it does feel like Maryland has a little bit of the, that double-digit underdog with fleas kind of deal where people are kind of, oh, I'm going to take I'm gonna take Maryland plus the points. Ohio State, I wasn't that impressed with them so far. Like, I, I don't know. I, I, it feels like maybe one of those games that could be close at, in the, at halftime and maybe just Ohio State kind of pulls away in the second half. Uh, J- Jeff, you got any, any thoughts on this one? Can I present to you the Maryland schedule so far? Of course, you can um, present whatever yeah. you want to me. Uh, Indiana, Michigan State, Virginia, Charlotte, and Towson. They're going in the, the yep. horseshoe now. Like This is a big step up of competition for them. I, I know it's, what, 19 points right now, I think it is, in, in, in this game, 19 and a half. Um, I know Ohio State at times has sputtered a little bit offensively, but Notre Dame is not I mean, Maryland's not Notre Dame. Right? Like I think this game has the potential to be a huge blow win for Ohio State. Like I, I don't Maryland has not faced anything close to Ohio State where they have played good team, at least one good team so far, and they blow up the other teams. I, I guys, I'm I'm not I don't have a, a, a play in this game, but I would if you asked me to choose, I would choose Ohio State here. Yeah, I see twenties twenties uh, pretty much everywhere with the exception of. Uh... Ref Kings, I see 19 and a half, and Bookmaker Offshore, I see, I see 19 and a half as well. Uh, Sammy, you looking to get involved in uh, Buckeyes Terps? I, Jeff, don't you ever disrespect the Towson Tigers like that, okay? Are we, are we on the same I'm page sorry, now? Sorry, don't buddy. disrespect Towson. I'm sorry. sorry. Um, I, I'm totally kidding. Uh, Ohio State, uh, not to get into my numbers really deep today, but I think it's important when you have these bigger spreads, Barry, you, you have to look to your power ratings. And, you know, I, Ohio State is 125, and I've got Maryland at 108. So that's 17. How much is home field worth at Ohio State? At least four or five. So we're we're north of 21 here. And I was a little surprised to see, you know, Circa open 18, 18 and a half. They respect Maryland because Maryland can move the ball. But how many times is Maryland going to stop Ohio State? This is very similar to the Georgia-Kentucky game, where I think the favorite is too powerful, too well on both sides of the ball, where, yeah, Maryland's going to score, but what happens if Maryland throws a pick six or has a fumble six and and gets behind 21-7 or 21-3, something like that? I would lay it and uh, lay it before it gets to 21 if it does, in fact, get there by Saturday. Yeah, I think there's a little bit of like going from facing a knuckleball pitcher to facing a pitcher throwing 99 miles an hour, a little bit of that kind of effect here for Maryland with the schedule. Ohio State off of a bye. This is a pretty good Ohio State defense, one of the better ones they've had you know, in recent memory. I just think it's pretty simple. I think Ohio State is just going to be able to run the ball basically seven, seven, eight yards a clip, and when you can do that, you can play action. Uh, their quarterback, look, when you're an Ohio State quarterback, usually you're used to having those video game stats. This kid doesn't have that, so maybe, you know what, you're up 17 late and you stick another one or two in the end zone late to uh, you know, to give him some confidence, it'd be Ohio State or nothing for me. Yeah, I do think there's still people out there that may have questions about Ohio State's uh, quarterback position. Maybe Marvin Harrison isn't fully 100%. Uh, they did have the off week since the Notre Dame game, which which is a good thing. So you look at the, the national landscape over the last couple of years. Last year at this point, entering October, TCU was unranked. Two years ago, entering October, Michigan was ranked 14th. So each of the last two years, you've had a team that was outside of the top 10 entering October but wind up making the playoff. Jeff, I will ask you first. If you had to pick a team right now outside the top 10 to make the playoff, because you can obviously find odds to make the playoff odds, odds to win the title out there, uh, you can probably get a good price on a team right now that might not be in the top 10. So who, uh, who are we looking at outside the top 10 you think make, make a run? 
is Cam Rising playing this season or not? Like it's like if, if, well, if Cam Rising's playing, I, I Utah, I think would be I, I'd go Utah, right? But is is he playing, Sammy? Do we know Will? Is, is Cam Rising ever playing this season? Because if he plays, don't ask Kyle Winningham. Yeah, because if he plays, like he's <laughs> he's upset. It's, I understand his anger about this. Um, if he plays, they're going to be really good again. Like they're going to be one of the best teams in the country. Offensively, they're worse than Iowa right now. You just put in Cam Rising, you're better. Their defense is fantastic. Now the injuries are concerned. They have a ton of injuries all over the field, not just a quarterback. But I, I got to imagine if Utah, they host Oregon. I believe they have to go to Washington. Uh, they go to USC, but those are places I think that they're not intimidated by. No, um, they but from. Utah is the team for me. If Cam comes back, they upgrade immediately to a much better offense, and their defense is fantastic. So uh, to me, it's Utah, guys. You know, the, the Heat made the NBA Finals. The Florida Panthers made the Stanley Cup Finals. Miami basketball made the going? Final Four. Can the Miami Hurricanes, can, can they? Uh, look, I, I know I, we, we talked about that might be a, a few too many points in a tricky spot this week, but there's the talent there. It's not a, it's not a, a you know, a brutal schedule. How about Miami? What, what number is there on Miami, too? Because like we talked about last week, there are no numbers here in Connecticut. So this is all, uh, you know, <laughs> this is all for for the point of a hypothetical let's exercise. See if but, I can find something here. Yeah. Man, I wish we could bet these. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, Miami again. I, I was high on them this year because I think we saw in year two what what Mario did at Oregon and what he can do at Miami. And they're just like your point about building up through the trenches, guys. It's Ooh, what, it? what do you got? And uh, you, if, if I'm in the DraftKings app right now, Miami is plus twelve hundred to make the college football playoff. That's not bad. That's really no. not bad. I think we all have huh. to bet that. Like, we all bet the Chicago Bears under five and a half two weeks ago mid show. <laughs> I mean, how good is that? that one? <laughs> the, bear, yeah. oh, the Bears. Yeah, that worked out okay. Uh, I, Sammy, I just, I, I know we have another podcast for this, but you, your bear stuff just, it's, it's so great. Oh, there, there. That I think we all have to bet Miami, though. Let's do Miami. it. I'm going to do it right we, now. We do. I'll, I'll do it right now too. That that bears that bears Broncos game. We're all, we're all rushing against that, each other to get the best that, number on this right now. By the way, I don't have anything. I'm, I'm blind bear. I'm gonna have to Venmo you. I'm, I'll, I'll Venmo you. I'll show you a text message. We <laughs> gotta figure do. something out. <laughs> all, and, I, and, I and, and, and the better the better number is DraftKings. By the way, because it's only a, it's only plus a thousand at uh at FanDuel. So uh, so let's uh, let's all simultaneously make I'm, our Miami. Let's do it. My, my, Miami to make the college football playoff okay. bets at DraftKings right now. Plus twelve hundred. It's it's worth a little. Investment. I think it's, I think it's yeah. certainly worth. There worth we go. It. We're in. Perfect. Boom. Uh, Bear, right I have right one here. more right. thing Done. for you, if I may, if I can do this. Uh, this is uh, UCF in Kansas. You could do what um, you could do whatever you want, Sammy. I was going to ask you if you I, had anything else for us. I knew you did, and 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 he, the table is yours. Thousand. The bosses will not approve of you saying I can do whatever I want. I know that for a fact. Um, but we have. Uh, I know the bosses. Uh, I, I've got Paul. I've got Paul with them. All right, fair enough. Uh, UCF in Kansas. I expect some point today we're going to get two reports. One, that John Rice Plumley is in for UCF, which is what I was hoping for basically all week. We bet a little over 63 and 64 on Monday and Tuesday. Um, 64 and a half, 65 right now, but with Plumley in, I mean, I, I don't think it's really going to matter. And then on the other side of the ball, it doesn't sound good for Jalen Daniels. So expect Jason Bean to start for Kansas. But as the three of us know, Bean has started a lot. I mean, he started half the season last year. They moved the ball extremely well. And as one wise guy told me, there's no coach in the country that maneuvers safeties like Lance at Kansas. Big plays down the field. I think we get a shootout between Bean and Plumlee. And even at 65, guys, that feels like a game that could be 38-35 either way. And there's one other game that's off the radar, kind of like you were talking about there, that I've kind of been monitoring all week. Uh, there was some quarterback news about Akron, about DJ Iron starting quarterback out for the year with the torn ACL. I'm hoping that number hits seven because Northern Illinois shouldn't be laying seven against anyone. Can't score. I, I took a little <laughs> six and a half, but I'm really hoping that that number does touch seven with the uh, with Akron starting quarterback out, and, and people wind up wanting, wanting to bet on uh, old Rocky Lombardi and the Huskies on the road uh, against Akron, who might be the most unluckiest team in the. Uh, in, in the college football world last night, went over to an overtime loss last two weeks. And so, they lost to two by Indiana. Yeah, and then you've got, yeah, last 15 games, they've got a three point loss to Temple, a two point loss to Indiana, a three point loss to Buffalo, a one point loss to Buffalo, a six point loss to Western Michigan, a six point loss to Kent State, a seven point loss to Central Michigan, and a three point loss to Bowling Green. So they have been on the wrong end of all these close games. So 
Uh, if I can get that seven, I'll be uh, I'll be really happy. Well, you got anything else for us before we uh, let you guys go? No, I, I think we covered it. I just uh, we we got to settle and figure out how much uh, we're, we're going in here in Miami. I like that bet at twelve to one, but it should be a fun week. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll have that conversation offline. All right, guys. Uh, Sammy, enjoy your uh, your trip to South Florida. Make sure you get one of uh, Mario's little uh, uh, light, 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 lighter fluid uh, <laughs> Cuban, Cuban coffees there that you probably walk from uh, my, Miami to, to Jacksonville after one of those. Sammy, we'll, uh, we'll talk to you soon. Will, we'll catch up with you in the state of Connecticut. We can... Uh, Go raid a sugar, ca- sugar house kiosk or something together. Another fantastic gambling group chat. We cover so many actions, so many games there. Hope you guys get some nuggets for your college football. We get some futures as well. That Miami wager, I like that bear. I like the Miami wager. I'm in on that. We're, we're all in we're all, on, we're on it. Except Will, who unfortunately has to Venmo you money, but that's that's <laughs> life living in, in a state. I'm, I live in North Carolina. I'm, I, I got to do that as well sometimes. Let's get to your wager so far you've made in the show, and then we'll get to your, your best bet. And my best bet, you have UCLA laying three points at home against Washington State. That game is early. It is a three Eastern game on Pac-12 Network. You have Georgia at home. Laying the 14 and a half, hosting Kentucky. Both those teams are undefeated. You have AM and maybe the biggest game in Jimbo Fisher's history of, uh, as an Aggie coach, uh, getting a point and a half here against Alabama. You have Marshall plus six and a half on the road to NC State. All right, Bear. Uh, our, both our best bets are on the West Coast. Let's hear let's hear yours first. Isn't it, isn't it a perfect opportunity? This is isn't yes. this a Justin Wilcox special? Absolutely. Right here, Cal getting nine and a half. Absolutely. Oregon State, the big win last week, Thursday night against a shorthanded Utah team. Now you're going on the road. You're laying close to double digits against the Golden Bears, oh, who yeah. weren't great in their win against ASU. Like, it's just a perfect opportunity. We've seen DJ's uh, performance the last few weeks kind of go down just a little bit. Last three weeks, barely 50% completions. Now, I think Justin Walcox's defense will have something in store for him. And remember, as an underdog, I think. Wilcox is something like 28 and 12 against the number that Ed Cal is an underdog. So like you yeah. throw, you even yeah. throw that trend out, but just, yeah, I, but, I think all the it. circumstance, I mean, they, they, they held Auburn to 14 points and, and covered that game. It's a dog nearly one out. Right. I, I don't know. Or I look, like, Oregon State's a good team, but laying close to double digits here. Yeah. I'll take the bears. Uh, Justin Wilcox is 10 and four against the spread of, as a home underdog in conference play. Like this is what Cal does. Um, Oregon state is a little one dimensional offense. I, I felt odd that the commentary coming out of the win against Utah was Oregon state played this like great game. Mm. Like what game they, did they, watch? they scored a, on a trick play on a fourth down, right. On, on the bold, the bold. Like yep. they, they were okay. They were okay. They beat a shorthanded Utah team who lost one of their best pass rushers in the game. Obviously quarterback situation was bad. They're back on the road. It's a sleepy place to play Memorial stadium. Cal defensively, not as good as previous years, but they're good. If you're one dimensional, I think the Beavers are very one dimensional on offense. So I'm with you here. I, I, will, I will be wagering this as well. And I think I like the under in this one. I think it's 51 and a half. I'm staying out West for, for, for my best bet here as I normally do in the Pac-12 conference. I'm taking UCLA to cover the first half against Washington state bear. How about this? There has been six ranked teams in the Pac-12 conference that have gone on the road for their first conference road game. I'm talking about teams that were ranked at the time. That includes Colorado. Mm-hmm. That includes UCLA and Utah. All six have not covered in the first half. They've not covered in the first half. Mm. They had all Oregon started slow at Stanford last nope. weekend. Washington started slow at Arizona. USD started slow at Arizona State. You have Washington State coming off of two out of Colorado three. Started, most, Colorado started slow at Oregon. Yeah, they, uh, something like that. Um you, you have Washington State coming off of these two emotional home games, right? Wisconsin, they played Northern Colorado, then they played Oregon State. You're going on the road to a sleepy Rose Bowl, man. Like I've, I've been to 50 games in the Rose Bowl. There's going to be no one at that game. <laughs> the, 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 the Dodgers have a home game. USC has a home game this weekend. Be no one there. You have to create your own energy. And UCLA is really good on defense. Their front seven is fantastic. I think they're going to hit Cam Ward. They're going to pressure Cam Ward. Cam Ward has played so much better this year, but hasn't really had sort of a, a, a defense like this one that can really test him up front. UCLA's defense is seventh in, in, in havoc rate. That means you combine pressure, sacks, tackles for loss. They're really good. So I think UCLA comes out fast off a of bye as well, and it kind of smother them right away. I know you have uh, the Bruins as well covering full game. I, I'm fine with that. I think that's a good wager as well. So those are our best bets for the show, Bear. That was that was good. We we covered a lot in that group chat. It was good, but whether if it was futures uh, this week, and it, it, it's a good solid slate of games. It feels like we're going to get, like, like I alluded to up top, like, like some underdogs that wind up winning outright. Uh, maybe a little bit of 
uh, upheaval. And, and then it looks like two next week looks like we got the two games that stand above all others. USC going to Notre Dame. Oh, I'm gonna and, be, the, and then the little game in the PNW. I'm going to be, I'm I'm debating whether I show up next weekend in full Oregon attire. I might just go for it. I thought you were going to say I'm debating next week as to whether I show up no, at all. No, I'm not. Well, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I told my wife that uh, I had to give her two week notice. I said, honey, I will be in rare form when Oregon plays Washington on the 14th at 3.30 p.m. Eastern. It'd be best if you just weren't here. So I think she's going to go out. I, told her, I was like, you take the kids. I'll pay for whatever. Just exactly. like, here's, let here's, me watch the go. game by myself. So, oh, man, I cannot wait for that game. Oregon's going to win it. Just letting you guys know right now. So just just take it to the bank. It feels like Oregon's like the forgotten team in the Pac-12. They're, they're really freaking good. I don't, I, I, people, it, it bothers me how much people talked about first-year coaches last year that struggled. Mario Cristobal, Brett Venables, Dan Lanning. Like, that they couldn't coach anymore because they went to a different place. And it's like, just let them get their own guys. Like, give them a chance and look how much better Oklahoma is. Oregon is. Miami is. Like, guys that have a track record. I know Landon didn't have much of a track record, but but Venable certainly did at Oklahoma. Like, they got their own guys and they're better, Bear. So, it just bothers me how kind of we the narrative of this offseason went. So, that's my Oregon-Washington take right now. I'm, I'm already looking forward. You haven't, this week hasn't, start, hasn't even started. And I'm already looking forward to next wait. week. So, that'll put a bow on this week. Yes. Jeff, for Sammy P, for Will. I'm Bear. I appreciate you watching. Make sure you uh, subscribe, download, rate, review, all that wonderful stuff wherever you get your podcasts. Another week of Bear Bets presented by Big Noon Kickoff in the books. Always remember, the less you bet, the more you lose when you win.